Evaluate functions, domain. Domain is all of the possible values for x. So this means any value that I could plug into the expression and come out with a good value for the function. This is called our input. So there's going to be some limits on what we can plug into the function because there's some x's that are going to create problems. For example, when you have a fraction, we cannot have a 0 as our denominator. Remember that any time we have a fraction and the bottom ends up being 0, that makes the fraction undefined. That's a problem. So we also want to be watching for times that we have even radicals. Any time that we're taking a square root or a fourth root, we cannot have negatives under that root. Basically, if I tried to ask you what's the square root of negative 1, you're like, well, looking for two different numbers that are exactly the same, they can multiply to negative 1, and there's no numbers like that. If you had a negative times a negative, you'd still end up back with a positive. So there's no way to really get a negative by multiplying two numbers together, so you can't take the square root of a negative. This is something that uh, we often call imaginary numbers can't really visualize what it is to take the square root of a negative number. So when we are dealing with these radicals, we're going to end up with some inequalities in our expressions. We'll have greater than, we'll have less than. So another thing that we need to know in order to solve for the domain is we need to know that whenever you divide an inequality by a negative, you must reverse the inequality sign. So that means that if we started out with something that was greater than or equal to a number, all of a sudden we're going to be having something that is going to have to be less than or equal to a number. So we're just changing less than for greater than, greater than for less than, changing the direction that the sign points in is what we have to do whenever we divide by a negative when we're dealing with inequalities. Okay, so let's actually see how that plays out in an example. Our example one here says find the domain when f of x is 3 fourth root of negative 3x minus 9 plus 4. So the main thing that we're interested in right here is where we're going to have our problem. Our problem is going to be with this even root. Whenever we have an even root, we can't have a negative number underneath. So the expression that I have underneath here is negative 3x minus 9. And this expression, I don't want that expression to come out to a negative number because I can't take the square root or the fourth root of a negative. So I can say, well, it's possible that this could be greater than 0. It could be a positive number or it could be equal to zero. So this little caret right here says that I'm doing something that's bigger than zero, greater than zero, but it's also possible that we could have it equal to zero because the square root of zero would be zero. So this sign right here is greater than or equal to zero. So now we have an inequality, and in order to solve an inequality, we use about the same method that we do for solving an equation, and we're going to um, you know, do the same thing to both sides and try to isolate the x. The only difference is that whenever we divide by a negative, again, we need to reverse this sign. 
So let's work through this example and see what happens when we try to solve for x. So we can add 9 to both sides and we'll have negative 3x is greater than or equal to 9. Then we'll divide both sides by negative 3. So here we have it. This is our big moment. We're dividing by a negative sign. And when we divide by a negative, we need to change the direction of the inequality. So we had greater than. Now all of a sudden we're going to have less than. So here on the left hand side we end up with x, and on the right hand side we end up with negative 3. So that means the possible inputs that will work in this scenario is going to be anything where x is less than or equal to negative 3. So negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, these would all be numbers that we could plug in to our f of x function and come up with a valid answer when we evaluate. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at example two. This one asks us to find the domain when g of x is three, absolute value of two x plus seven squared minus four. So in this case, remember that the two different problem points that we're looking for is when we have fractions, we've got to watch the denominator, and when we have even roots, we want to watch the number underneath that radical. But in this case, I don't have any even roots and I don't have any fractions, so really any number that I wanted to plug into x would give me a valid value for this g function. So this one, my domain is actually going to be all real numbers. Any x you want to use. Okay. So now, let's go ahead and look at our final example. So this one, example 3, asks us to find the domain when h of x is x minus 1 divided by the expression x squared minus x minus 2. So remember with fractions, we're looking for making sure that this bottom, the denominator, is not equal to zero, because we don't want to come up with something undefined. So you want to make sure that x squared minus x minus 2 is not equal to zero. So this symbol right here just means equal sign crossed out cannot be equal to zero, not equal to zero. So then in order to figure out what values for x exactly are a problem, we're going to have to solve this expression as well. I'm just going to treat this like a normal equal sign. And the left hand side here, remember when we're trying to solve with something with an x squared and an x term, we have to factor in order to solve. So when we factor, we'll get x minus 2 times x plus 1. So that means the same thing as our original expression, and that we still don't want to be equal to zero. So then we can use our product rule to say, well, if this first part was equal to zero, we'd have a problem. Or if the second part was equal to zero, we'd have a problem, because zero times anything would give us zero. So we want to make sure that x minus two is not equal to zero, and x plus one is not equal to zero. So, for this left hand side, solving for x, just add 2 to both sides and we come up with x is not equal to 2, minus 1, minus 1, x is not equal to negative 1. So these are the two different values where if we plug them into this expression, we would come up with a 0 as our denominator and we would then have an undefined expression. That would be a problem. We would not have a valid value when we evaluate. So these are the two limits that we have to place on the domain of our function.